What's going on, folks? This is the Conscious One coming at you. Back at you with another story, guys, about Chicago Stadium. Surprise, surprise. You know, guys, growing up in Chicago, I cannot tell you how much, man, how can I put it, just nostalgia I still have about growing up in Chicago. I grew up about one mile down the street from Chicago Stadium. And when the Bulls started winning the championships in the 90s, I was about 11 years old when they won their first championship. And I'll never forget the first Bulls game my mother took me to. She actually pretended that she was taking me and my cousin bowling. And I'll never forget when she stopped the car in front of the Chicago Stadium. I, I knew it. I just knew it. My mother was full of surprises. And it was my first Chicago Bulls game. I mean, my mother, she picked the perfect time to surprise me at 11 years old to take me to a Bulls game. And I just, again, I never forget when she stopped the car in front of that stadium, how I felt. And I was about to see the nostalgia of, of this Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. I was already hyped, even as an 11 year, 11 year old, over the Bulls. I wish, guys, that I could take you guys in the time machine and take you back to what it was like to go to a Michael Jordan game in the old Chicago stadium. There is no stadium, guys, that will ever be as loud as this place. I don't even think they'll even be allowed to build a stadium like this again. The energy that I see young people dealing with with LeBron James and all the NBA guys of today and nostalgia can never be compared to what I witnessed growing up in the mid 90s. I even believe I started dunking at, well I started dunking basketballs at about age 16. And I grew up a chubby kid and I strongly believe it was because of the Chicago Bulls that I was able, in Michael Jordan especially, that I actually started dunking at 5 foot 11. I, I went from chubby to extremely athletic. I was the only uh, guy uh, in my, in my classroom, at least in high school, that was under six feet that could dunk, you know what I mean? And, you know, can, can this be because of Michael Jordan and the Bulls? I don't know, maybe it's just that I felt like I could do anything back in those days. And the chubby kid was now the one who was had serious athletic skills amongst all his peers. Um, the old Chicago Stadium, guys, if you could hear I wish you guys could hear the noise. I still dream about the Chicago Stadium. I still dream about Wrigley Field. I dream about Wrigley Field more than any than uh, any place I've been when I was young. But I still have dreams about old Chicago Stadium. The noise was out of this world. I'm leave, I got a couple of clips for you guys. And you know, as we as as we see in the documentary here, the stadium was built for acoustics. It was built to be loud. When they turned those lights off, and those Bulls, you know, characters came out, and Michael Jordan, I'm gonna tell you guys, I have never heard anything louder in my life, and I never will. I mean, literally, you could feel every single strand of hair on your head. It just it it. it it, op it opened up all your pores. It was kind of a spiritual experience. That's the only way I can relate it. And I feel so sorry for young people growing up today. They will never know how it felt to hear the Bulls starting lineup in old Chicago Stadium. I even went to a new, the new Chicago Stadium when Derrick Rose was playing. And they did the same thing. They turned the lights off and announced the players. And it was nothing compared to what it was like in old Chicago Stadium, Michael Jordan and the Bulls. It was nothing can compare to it, guys. Nothing can ever compare to that. I feel, again, I feel so bad. Most of you now from Chicago, y'all would never know how it felt to be in old Chicago Stadium hearing the Bulls starting lineups. All I can do is, you know, give you a clip of it. You guys can put on your headphones. You should listen to it in your headphones, by the way. And, I believe this even blew out my, my headphones I'm using now, my, uh, even a microphone not working right. And the left ear of these headphones I'm using right now, it went out. And I believe this is because I was listening to the old Chicago Stadium starting lineups. 
these headphones couldn't even take the frequencies coming out from that sound on my computer now this uh, starting lineup was very special because it says here that this song was called serious not serious as in I'm serious about doing my job serious as in the star system series a song that was written by the Alan Parsons project Now, this is very strange guys you have to ask yourself what what in the world was really going on let me tell you something guys it wasn't about basketball it was something deep it was more than basketball guys when I was inside that stadium listening to the starting lineups of the Bulls and hearing this song serious I'm telling you guys, it, it was not it was not just about basketball. It was some kind of spiritual experience that you had going to old Chicago Stadium. And then some of you can type in Michael Jordan, number 23, how he's connected to the Star System series. This stuff is deep. This was not about basketball, guys. This was about something totally on a whole different level. And so that's about all I can tell you guys. But when you listen to these starting lineups, just put on your put on some hi-fi headphones. And listen to how those fans sound, especially when Michael Jordan came out. It is a spiritual experience. All right. I'll let y'all later. Peace. In 1929, the Chicago Stadium made Chicago step in front of the Big Apple. Built in typical Deco style, the structural design of the stadium was one that condoned loud noise with particularly deafening acoustics. Its vast, uninterrupted setup had been described as barn-like, which meant that people's cheers could bounce off the walls and ceilings. The building included a fabled organ, which had six keyboards and 3,663 pipes that rumbled the arena. From both the organ and the tens of thousands of fans that could congregate in it, the stadium was known to be the loudest place in the city and was called the Madhouse on Madison. In addition, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Chicago Bulls welcome the world's greatest fans to the Chicago Stadium. Tonight, game one of the NBA Finals is between the Portland Trailblazers and your Chicago Bulls. And now for tonight's lineups. First for the visiting Portland Trailblazers. At forward, from Maryland, 6'8", Buck Williams. A 6'7", forward from Longwood College, Jerome Kersey. At center, a double O from Eastern Illinois, Kevin Jackward. At one guard, from Wisconsin, Stevens Point, 6'3", Jerry Porter. At the other guard, 6'7", from Houston, Clyde Drexler. The Portland Trailblazers are coached by Rick Adelman. So there you have it guys, 
it's a spiritual experience just watching it. And I mean, think about the starting lineups. Think about the Bulls. Think about the think about the bull. Think about the connections to ancient Egyptian gods. And then when Horus Grant comes out, they announce Horus. This is all about design, folks. Pippin, no, number thirty-three. Pippin looked like a bull. I mean, this whole thing, the starting lineups here. And then John, John Paxson. John is actually, I think it's, John is actually Elijah. The uh, name John actually means Elijah. This was a ritual, guys, this starting lineup. And let me tell you, i say it one more time before I get out of here. Y'all will never, ever, ever know what it was like to hear those starting lineups in the old Chicago Stadium. Uh, it was a straight-up ritual. That's all I can say. I'm out.